All right, thanks for joining. In this video, we're going to take a look at an introduction to a topic called inheritance. A lot of object-oriented languages use this idea. And even if you're a beginner, uh, you're going to probably see this idea and go, oh, geez, why didn't I learn this earlier? This can save me so much coding time in my projects. Basically, what uh, the general idea of it is, is when you have a couple objects, and I'm just going to take uh, a few here that the player fires, the arrow, a bullet and a bomb. The player can chuck these. You know that there's going to be code that you probably code in my arrow. So let me just peek at my arrow code here. So I do things when it hits the big wall. There's some code I run. When it's outside the room, there's some code I run. And likely, you might find that you're doing very similar or the exact same code in the bullet and in the bomb. But you don't want to have to retype or copy paste that exact same code every single time. Imagine you had 20 different things that the player could throw and they all share some very similar code. You shouldn't be copy pasting 20 times. So you use this idea of inheritance. So basically here it is. In Game Maker, what you're allowed to do with an object is you're actually allowed to take an object and give it a parent. And so you can see here my arrow has no parent right now. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a parent of the arrow and I'm going to create a parent for the bullet and a parent for the bomb and I'm going to call this parent projectile and I'm going to code this one and I'm going to give it that code for hitting the big wall I'm going to give it the code for going out of the room etc then what I'm going to be able to say is basically hey arrow your parent is a projectile and instantly you get all the code that you just coded in the projectile I'm gonna say bullet I'm a projectile as my parent you're gonna get all the code too. bomb my parents a projectile I'm gonna get all the code as well and then it saves you coding all three of those objects and of course you may not want all three objects to do exactly the same thing so we'll show you how you do your modifications but you're saving a lot of time now, here's a fast way to do it. Now, I've already coded the arrow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of cheat here. This is something you would have wanted to do right off the start if you already knew about inheritance. So I'm going to duplicate my arrow, and I'm just going to call it Object Projectile. And the sprite, I don't need a sprite. So just no sprite, no parent, and hit OK. And basically what's just happened here is I've given this projectile I'll just move it up the chain here. This projectile now has the same code the arrow has. So I'm going to now go back to my arrow. I'm actually just going to delete these events. So the arrow's totally clear. But what I'm going to do with my arrow is just go parent. And I'm going to say I want the parent to be projectile object. I want the bullet to have the parent and you can probably guess here projectile and I want the bomb to have the parent projectile as well now no code you won't see it pop up here but what you will have is when you click on these objects again as you'll see it does remember the parent is projectile so what this means is that whatever you've coded here the arrow now has a create event that has this code there's a variable called damage how much damage it's gonna do when it hits something it has the event for hitting the big wall, which does this. And then it has little code when it goes outside of the room. It destroys itself. Now, if I actually run this program and I just made it the A, S, and D key, you can see that just by coding that one parent object projectile, what I have is I have all of them okay, do the same code. So that's pretty good. You've probably, if you've coded any game where you throw stuff, chuck stuff, hit stuff, bounce into stuff, you've probably ended up repeating the code over and over and over again if you've, you know, coded any games. So instantly you probably say to yourself, oh, that would have saved me a lot of time. But of course the beginner now says, but I don't want it to do exactly the same thing. For instance, when I'm moving the player here and I hit the wall, one point off the wall, one point off, one point off. What I want is I want maybe these to do different amounts of damage. That would be something very typical, right, when you're throwing weapons. So here's what I do. When I've designed my projectile parent object, in the create event, 
I gave every projectile a damage variable. So you see here, damage is one. Now, when I hit a big wall, I say other, which is the big wall, make its hit points go down by my damage variable, which is equal to one right now for all those things, right? What I want to do is I can just do something called overriding. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the damage variable for the arrow, for the bullet, and for the bomb. And this is called overriding an event. And so what I'll do here, whoops, let's just minimize this one, is I'll just go to the arrow, and I'm going to add a create event. Now, it's interesting because once you do this, okay, once you do just one space bar in there, you have just now said, I don't want the create event from my parent. So in projectile, the parent of the arrow, there was the create event that said damage equals one. As soon as you put the space bar, that's it. You don't get that code anymore from the create event. Now, if you do want it, there's a way to get it. We'll show you in the next video. But for now, that's gone. So what I do here is I say damage equals two. So now when it ends up running the code, that damage variable that's used is equal to two for the arrow. And then I could go to the bullet. I could go create. And I can say damage equals five. And then I could go to the bomb. And I could add the create and just set the damage to something big, right? Damage equals 25. Okay, so it's really important to understand the idea there is as soon as you touch it, and they call these the child objects, right? It's the child to its parent. These child objects no longer use the code from the parent's create method. So it's as if this code here doesn't exist anymore. But when we run this, you'll see the rest of the code is still inherited and given to the child objects. And now we have two off. 5 off, and 25 off. So you can get variety. I just did it with one variable, but obviously you could do it with speed, damage, uh, you know, she, you can do it with whatever you want, right? Whatever your game needs to give those objects a little extra personality, but still they inherit the core code from the parent object. Okay, so it's a big time saver. You can see here, children objects, arrow, bullet, bomb. It lets you know which ones are using this object as a parent. Okay, thanks for watching. Watch the next video because there's more to this than we've shown you so far. It gets more powerful. Okay, see you in the next video.